Hi guys, Max here, and yesterday was another pretty turbulent day for the markets. It started out actually quite strong for the most part, but it ended up a little bit weak with most of the gains that were made being lost in the end. Stocks were cautiously green for the day, but only just. We also had a couple important earnings reports come out, so there was plenty to talk about, and let's just get right into it. Now, as you can see, pretty much here or there, no consolidated movement at all, just normal markets at work for once, individual companies behaving as individual companies, which is really nice to see. Microsoft did really well after their strong earnings report yesterday, rising almost 5%. Nvidia and Taiwan Semiconductors fell 2 and 3% each. Google and Facebook did pretty poorly as well, but everything else did okay for the most part. Energy and materials were quite strong as well. Now by the day's end, the S&P 500 moved up by about 0.2%, so really nothing special at all, and the Nasdaq fell by 0.1%, so again, nothing really major. At one point during the day though, both of the indexes were up by about 1.5%, so they just couldn't hold it, but they did have those gains for a moment. We are now still on track for April to be the worst month for the Nasdaq since 2008 and the worst month of the Great Recession. Still though, there is just too much fear about the Fed hiking rates again. Markets are now pretty much convinced that a half a percent raise is coming next month. I'm not sure how businesses or the economy will fare when it comes and neither are investors, so they're worried. There are, of course, other the usual fears too. China's COVID struggle and the subsequent supply chain shocks that we're going to see as a result of that. The fears surrounding the war in Ukraine may be spilling out into where other countries are not going away and sanctions are continuing to be levied against Russia and the energy crisis in Europe is deepening too. So there is just plenty to worry about and investors know that too. Now, the US dollar is still continuing to strengthen against everything pretty much across the board consistently day by day. The euro has now fallen to $1.05. It's getting really, really close to parity now. The pound has fallen to $1.25, a far cry from where it used to be sitting, right around at about $1.40 back in 2021. Now, I don't really know how much stronger the dollar can get, but it's showing no signs of slowing down yet. Bonds got very volatile again, reversing the recent movement they had over the first part of this week. US 10-year yields had fallen for a few days in a row, but yesterday they jumped back up by 10 basis points in a very volatile move. That isn't really ideal, and the yield is now sitting at 2.82%, getting very close to another four-year high for US bond yields. Oil prices are just staying pretty high too. WTI crude oil didn't really move from yesterday and it's sitting pretty much exactly where it was at $102 a barrel with Brent crude sitting a little bit higher at $105. This seems to be just the natural level for oil right now without any bullish or bearish news and headlines going around without any developments with Russia or OPEC or anything. This is where we are settling just like in late 2021 when we settled at around $70 or so. Finally, how did crypto and that entire industry do for the day? Well, nothing really special. Markets are still slightly depressed from their recent levels. Bitcoin is just below $40,000. Ethereum is just below $3,000. Both of them rose about 1% for the day. Altcoins though did a fair bit worse for the most part and most didn't really rise at all. Some fell. I'd say on average they rose about half a percent for the day. Just in general, we saw similar sentiment to Nasdaq tech stocks really. Risk on assets are just a little bit too risky right now so no one is piling on head first. Now we of course had some really important earnings from some big companies come out yesterday. So what were they? Well the biggest one, the most important one, was Facebook or Meta, but I hate the word Meta so I'm going to use Facebook. Now they came out with earnings that were actually pretty decent, nothing spectacular, but markets seem to absolutely love them. The big good thing for Facebook was that it grew its average daily users last quarter to 1.96 billion above the 1.94 billion estimate. Revenue for the quarter was actually quite a big miss, which is why I say it wasn't a brilliant earning session. Analysts expected around $30 billion for the quarter, just above that actually, and it came through under $28 billion, which really isn't great, but the earnings for Facebook was actually a beat because Facebook is cutting down on costs. The estimate for their earnings was $2.56 per share, but it came through at $2.72 a share. We also had a statement come out from Master Zuck himself, and he said that they are slowing down their investment on metaverse stuff, which was about a $10 billion a quarter expense, which investors thought was far too aggressive. They didn't like it, so they do like this cutback, and that's one of the reasons the stock surged. 
Expenses for Facebook for the year are now expected to drop from around $95 billion to about $90 billion, so that is a significant saving and bullish nonetheless. Basically, Facebook is still growing, albeit quite slowly for one of these mega tech companies. It is becoming a little bit leaner as well though. Hopefully their margins should increase with this news. And Facebook has actually been priced quite appropriately recently with a PE under 15. So the stock rose quite a lot on this report, about 18% after hours so far from the $170 mark to about the $205 mark. Now, Facebook are still claiming a little bit of struggles regarding business in Russia as a result of the Ukraine war and also a COVID overhang effect that some other companies like Netflix have blamed as well. And of course, they have the limits put on the data that they can collect due to Apple's change, but it's coping okay with those problems for the most part. Funnily enough now, Bloomberg put out a leaked report saying that Facebook would miss its revenue targets, which it did, the report was right, but it came out while markets were open and it pushed Facebook stock down about 3% for the day, only for the actual report, which had all the information, to be far, far better. Facebook is once again nearing in on being a half a trillion dollar company once again. Now the other big company that came out or the most interesting one in my opinion was Teladoc which posted its results and it did really quite badly. They've had to cut their future sales forecast to $2.4 billion down from what used to be $2.65 billion which might not sound like a huge impact but actually that's an almost 10% decrease so not small at all. The company is of course still loss making too. There has been some weird accounting stuff going on called Goodwill that got cut down, which basically meant that the company lost $6.7 billion last quarter when it expected to lose something like 200 million. In reality here, this is due to a $6.6 .6 billion impairment charge for its Goodwill. This doesn't mean that they burnt that much cash, but they've had to write off that much in paper assets as a loss. It's not quite as bad as it sounds, but it is still pretty bad. The company is also not seeing margins increasing, their growth is slowing, they are still unprofitable, their moat is proving to be not as strong as they thought it was, their advertising is not as effective as it used to be, and so things are looking bad and the share price tanked a colossal 37% in after hours trading, which is obviously a hugely bad result. The company was already down 80% since last year, and I saw a funny anecdote regarding this. The idea is that someone asks, what's a company that falls 90%? Well, it's a company that falls 80%, then gets cut in half, and that's basically what we've just seen happen with Teladoc. Now, Kathy Wood is getting a lot of stick regarding this because Teladoc is her second largest holding, and it's been getting closer and closer to overtaking Tesla as her largest holding. And before earnings yesterday, she bought up 616,000 shares over the last two weeks, only for those holdings to pretty much instantly decline by almost 40%. ARK Invest is just getting absolutely hammered right now and it's losing investors all over the place consistently day by day with a major outflow on Wednesday where $400 million left her fund in that day alone. Now that might not sound like too much but that is about 1.6% of her funds leaving her on a single day. That is absolutely awful. Now we have a little bit of news about Bill Huang who has been arrested and given a $100 million bail for his role in the collapse and the fraud of Archegos, which was that massive hedge fund that collapsed back in 2021. I'm not really sure how this will turn out, but basically the fund was just way too over levered and it crashed because of it. I don't really understand how what he did was illegal or worthy of being arrested. Maybe there's something regarding this that will come out in time. Maybe there's more information that isn't in the public eye yet. But basically, he borrowed money based on his assets from banks willing to lend him that money because they were stupid and they didn't do their due diligence or they were just greedy. He didn't force any bank to work with him at gunpoint. Now, I agree that he was greedy and stupid too, but the banks are being treated as victims here when they aren't and I personally don't see any criminality. Again, maybe there's more to the case than the situation that we don't know of yet. There must be really because as of yet, their argument is that he was manipulating the market but he was just a big fund and he was buying up stocks. So of course the price of those stocks was going to rise as he bought into them. If that counts as market manipulation, then every fund and every investor in the history of the world is guilty of that too. It's, it's called slippage, it's a very basic concept. I don't really know. In my mind, it doesn't sound like anything, but justice systems are weird, so we'll see, won't we? 
Now, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. If you want more content like this, then check out our Patreon and join our community of investors. You get access to our Discord, loads of exclusive content like insight into my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. There's a link in the description to masterworks.io, a site that can help you protect your portfolio against inflation through fractional shares of art from world famous artists like Banksy. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets on the brink. It's completely free to sign up, so make sure to check it out. There's also a link in the description to BlockFi, which will give you up to $250 in free Bitcoin when you use it. You can also get over 7% interest on stable coins to protect your hard earned cash from being eaten away by inflation. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.